Okay, good afternoon. Today will be the second lecture on the endocrine system. It is the last lecture in block two. So last time we were describing the endocrine system in general and differentiating between it and the nervous system. And also we described mainly the function of the major endocrine gland in the body, which is the pituitary gland. Today we are going to revise the anatomy related to the other endocrine glands in the body. But of course, some physiology should be added, but my main concentration will be about the anatomy. So the first gland we are going to describe today is the thyroid gland, and this is located in the neck. In fact, it is located in the lower part of the neck, as you can see it here. This is the location of the thyroid gland, and this is the shape of the thyroid gland. It looks like a butterfly, so it has two lobes. Each lobe is pear-shaped, and the two lobes are connected with each other by a narrow, we call it isthmus, so a narrow isthmus, uh, which crosses over uh, our anterior to the trachea. And the thyroid gland, as any other gland in the body, it has a rich blood supply. And this, is, uh, this can be understood because the glands require rich blood supply since they are going to secrete their uh, secretion to the blood. So there must be, they must have a rich blood supply. This is to show you the histology of the thyroid gland. You can see that inside the thyroid gland, there are what we call thyroid follicles. The follicle is a small sac. Thyroid follicles are lined by a typical simple cuboidal epithelium. So you can see it's typically simple cuboid cuboidal cells with centrally located nuclei. And in the center here, the space, the follicular space is filled with, with, with colloid material, a homogeneous material, as you can see, it's called the colloid material. And here, um, the thyroid gland is uh, unusual, uh, if you compare it with other glands, endocrine glands in the body, is that it secretes its secretion and store it outside the, the cells. They secrete the hormone and, secrete, uh, and store it outside the cell in this colloid material. And whenever the hormone is required, then, of course, here it, the hormone is not in, in the active form. So when it is required, it will be taken by the cells and then uh, activated and secreted to the blood as T3 and T4. T4 is the main hormone, thyroxine, although it is not the active, mainly active form, but it is most of the hormone is T4, tetraiodothyronine, in indicating the number of iod uh, iodine molecules attached to it. Uh, and the other one is T3, triiodothyronine. And I've, I've eventually T4 is going to uh, convert to T3. Probably you will study that in the physiology and have their effect on different um, cells and organs in the body. The secretion is under the control of the anterior pituitary, which secretes the thyroid stimulating hormone. And again, the anterior pituitary is under control of the hypothalamus, which secretes the uh, thyroid releasing hormone. So that's why whenever there is an a problem with the thyroid gland, they not only measure the levels of T3 and T4 in the blood, but also they have to measure the level of TSH in the blood. Because normally, whenever there is an increase in T3 and T4, this is going to have a negative feedback mechanism on the anterior pituitary to reduce the TSH. Okay, so um, like in cases of tumor of the pituitary glands, then you will have increased TSH and increased T3 and T4 because T3 and T4 will not have a negative feedback mechanism on, uh, on, the, on the pituitary. It already has a tumor secreting more TSH. When, but whenever there is a tumor, let's say, or increased secretion, the problem is primarily in the thyroid gland. There is increased T3 and T4 in the thyroid gland. So you will find high level in the blood of T3 and T4 but at the same time, the uh, TSH is low because there is no problem in the, in the pituitary gland. This is an example of a negative uh, feedback mechanism. Within the thyroid gland, there are 
not only follicular cells which form the follicles and secrete the T3 and T4, but there are other cells which are located outside the follicles. So that's why they are called parafollicular cells. Again, these cells, they secrete into the blood, but they secrete another hormone, which is totally different from the functions of the hormone of the thyroid gland. It's called calcitonin. And as the name of this hormone indicates, calci, calcitonin, it affects the metabolism of calcium in the body. So it reduces the level of um, calcium and phosphate in the blood. And this is by inhibiting the resorption of bone. Remember that the bony tissue is always built and resorbed, built and resorbed. So there will be a reduction in the resorption. Uh, a resorption of bone results in the release of calcium from the bone to the circulating blood to be used again. Here, they will affect the function of the osteoclasts, the cells that destroy the bone, and this will result in reduced amount of calcium in the blood. It's exactly opposite to the effect of the parathyroid hormone, which we are going to study. The parathyroid gland is, diff is a different gland from the thyroid gland. These are the cells which are called parafollicular cells, not parathyroid. Now, the thyroid hormone, generally, it is um, increased when there is like emergency situation. So it regulates oxygen use and metabolic rate. It increases oxygen use and metabolic rate and stimulates the synthesis of protein. And in order to provide more energy, it stimulates glycolysis and lipolysis. It also accelerates the development of the central of the nervous system in the first year of, of, of life. The parathyroid glands, as the name indicates, parathyroid means they are so closely related to the thyroid, and you can see them here. They are very small, like the size of a pea, and they, we have two pairs of them, superior and inferior pair, and located posterior to the parathyroid gland. Okay, not anterior, located posterior. They are outside the fibrous capsule of the thyroid gland, but they are so closely related to it. That's why um, in thyroid surgery, if the thyroid is totally removed, then they have to take care not to remove the parathyroid glands, or at least to keep a couple of them there. So you can see here in a section, in order to see the parathyroid gland, for example, here, you, you, you can still see the thyroid gland because they are so closely related to each other. This is the capsule of the thyroid gland, fibrous capsule. You can see the thyroid follicles and para. Uh, follicular cells, uh, but in the same section, you can see the parathyroid gland, which secretes the parathyroid hormone, and it has two types of cells. The chief cells, which are the cells that produce the hormone, and the oxyphil cells. Uh, the function is unknown. It is thought that they are the inactive forms of the chief cells, but the function is still uh, uh, to be determined. So two types of cells, the chief cells, as the name indicates, as they produce the parathyroid hormone and the parathyroid hormone, as I have just mentioned, has an opposing effect on calcium uh, in the blood to the, that of the parafollicular cells. So in other words, it increases the level of calcium in the blood. And this can be done by two ways. This is how the, the hormone works. The first way, is that it increases osteoclastic activities, destruction of bone by osteoclast, and so more calcium will be poured into the blood. And the second is that it increases the absorption of calcium from the intestine. This is by acting on the kidney to synthesize more of vitamin D, and vitamin D increases the absorption of calcium, and so there will be increase in the amount of circulating calcium in the blood. The other gland is the adrenal or suprarenal gland. As the name indicates, adrenal, it is close to the renal, close to the kidney. And you can see them here, two glands, on one on either side, on top of each kidney, suprarenal or adrenal. And they are actually composed of cortex and medulla. In fact, these are totally different from each other the cortex and medulla. They are different structurally, functionally, embryologically different from each other. So they are just located close to each other, 
but they are totally different from each other. The adrenal cortex, which as the name indicates, is at the periphery, and it is the large part of the gland, and there is a smaller medulla, which is, as the name indicates, it is in the center. Let's start with the cortex. This is how the cortex looks like. It is thick, thicker, as I said, larger than the medulla, and, and can be distinguished into three zones. Uh, you have to memorize these three zones, unfortunately. So they are the zona glomerulosa. The name of the zone uh, indicates the shape of, or the, uh, of how the cells are arranged. So a glomerulus, like the glomerulus of the kidney, it's like rounded. The cells are forming like spheres when they are together, like glomeruli, so zona glomerulosa. And then zona fasciculata, which is the thicker zone, and here the cells are like in fascicles. They are arranged one below the other, like fascicles. And then the zona reticularis, the cells are arranged like a network, like a reticulum. And in order to uh, memorize this, there's um, uh, a mnemonic which is used, it, it is the GFR. Have you studied the, if you study the physiology of the kidney, you know the, what is called the glomerular filtration rate. Yes or no? No. Okay, so some of you have studied the physiology of the kidney, and then they know the glomerular filtration rate, and this stands for glomerulosa G, fasciculata, and reticularis, from above downwards. Functionally speaking, these three layers, uh, they control what we call the three S's in the body. Three S's. So the zona glomerulosa secretes the aldosterone, and the aldosterone controls the salt in the body. It increases the reabsorption of sodium from the kidney. Remember last time I said that most of the plasma is filtered in the kidney, and then it is, the filtrate is reabsorbed. Of course, with control of, there are many hormones controlling that, and mechanisms controlling that, one of them is the aldosterone, or the last time we mentioned the antidiuretic hormone. But today I'm mentioning the uh, aldosterone, and this increases the reabsorption of sodium from the kidney. So uh, sodium reabsorption increases, goes back to the blood, and this will increase the reabsorption of water as, as well. So the zona glomerulosa controls the first S, the salt. The zona fasciculata secretes the glucocorticoids, and mainly it is the cortisol, and this controls the sugar, the blood sugar, the second S in the body. And the zona reticula reticularis, it's a small zone, and it secretes um, androgenic hormones, whether in the male or in the female, it secretes androgenic hormones. It has muscularizing effect, like in the female, for example, it stimulates the growth of the, of the hair in female, like the uh, hair in the armpit or in the pubic region. So it controls the sex. So that's why these are three S's, salt, sugar, and, and sex, controlled by zona glomerulosa, fasciculata, and reticularis. It is mainly the zona fasciculata that is under control of the anterior pituitary, the secretion of the corticotrophs corticotrophs uh, secrete adrenocorticotrophic hormone, the ACTH. Now, the medulla contains other types of cells, which are called chromaffin cells, and these uh, chromaffin cells are under the direct control of the autonomic nervous system. In fact, they are like postganglionic sympathetic neurons, but the difference is that these postganglionic sympathetic neurons, they secrete the neurotransmitter to the blood. So they don't secrete it to the effector organ like the smooth muscle or the gland. They secrete that into the blood. And it is the same neurotransmitter. It's a, the epinephrine, norepinephrine, okay? Or um, adrenaline, noradrenaline. It's the same. I mean, epinephrine, norepinephrine is the same as adrenaline, noradrenaline. One of them is the English term, which is derived from... Um, Roman, the other is the American term, which is derived from Latin, but both of them relate like epinephrine, epi means above, nephrine, nephros, again, it means the kidney, so it's like adrenaline and ad and renal, the same thing. 
<clears throat> and these hormones, they have, of course, they have sympathomimetic effects. They are like the neurotransmitters secreted everywhere else. But here, these cells, which are exactly the same as postganglionic neurons, they secrete the neurotransmitter to the blood. That's it. That's how, that's why the effect will be lingering. It takes a very long time, their effect, because they are, are circulating in the blood. In one disease, which is called Cushing syndrome, there will be like tumor in the pituitary gland, and this affects the corticotrophs. They secrete more ACTH, and this will result in uh, increase in the secretion of adrenal cortex, mainly secretion of the glucocorticoids. And the patient will have different signs and symptoms. This is the typical example with, because of redistribution of fat, there will be moon face, there will be buffalo hump here, a hump of fat on the, on the upper part of the back. There will be reduction in the protein synthesis. So the, the dermis will become very thin, easy bruising of the subcutaneous blood vessels or the blood vessels that are present in the dermis. The collagen and elastic fibers will become reduced because they are made of protein. And so the patient will have striae and very uh, thin skin. And this is the pancreas, has been mentioned several times. It's um, a gland located in the abdomen. It has a head, a body, and tail. Lies almost transversely in the posterior abdominal wall uh, behind the stomach. And histologically, most of the pancreas, 99% of it is exocrine. It is formed of SINI that secretes pancre pancreatic juice, uh, which is uh, for containing digestive enzymes. But there are some islets here, which are called pancreatic islets of Langerhan, which secrete hormones to the blood. So it is the endocrine part of the gland. This is the, the duct of the pancreas, the main pancreatic duct. Of course, it has been dissected. You cannot see it on the pancreas if it is not dissected. And you can see that the duct passes the entire length of the pancreas and opens into the duodenum. This is the duodenum. We're going to study that again in the digestive system. The endocrine part of the pancreas is the islets. These are the islets. You can see the islets here. They are surrounded by the SINI. The SINI are the uh, structures that belong to the exocrine part. And within the uh, islets, there are four types of cells. The predominant type is the beta cells, which produce the insulin. And then we have the alpha cells, which produce the glucagon. Insulin and glucagon have uh, opposing functions. And then we have the delta cells, which produce somatostatin. And this um, reduces the secretion of both alpha and beta cells. Don't mix between somatostatin and somatotropin. Somatotropin is the growth hormone. It is not produced here by the pancreas. And then we have alpha cells, and these produce hormones locally that affect the SINI, affect the exocrine part of the pancreas. So mainly we have alpha and beta cells that produce um, the alpha produce the glucagon and the beta produce the insulin. Insulin causes a reduction in the circulating blood sugar because it promotes the absorption of glucose into the cell. Remember, we mentioned that glucose is absorbed by facilitated diffusion. So whenever there is insulin, it will promote the facilitated diffusion of glucose into the blood. If insulin is not available or cannot be utilized, okay, it is available but cannot be utilized, then patient will suffer from increased blood sugar. And this is what we call diabetes mellitus. So we have two types of diabetes here. We have type 1 diabetes mellitus, two types of diabetes mellitus, not two types of diabetes, because we already have diabetes mellitus and diabetes insipidus, which is related to antidiuretic hormone. So here diabetes mellitus is two types, type 1 or the juvenile type, where it is an autoimmune disease. The body produces antibodies that destroy the beta cells, so there is no insulin, and this results in increased blood sugar. And in type 2, there is a reduction in the amount of receptors what we, in the cells that are affected by insulin. This is what we call down regulation. Remember, we mentioned that last time, first or second slide. 
second slide probably down regulation of the receptors that are affected by the insulin so there is insulin but the cells cannot utilize it or have less affinity to utilize insulin there is down regulation in its use the other hormones the other glands we have the ovaries and testis and i'm not going to go into details of the histology or the anatomy today because we are going to study that in in more details in block three here but it would be enough to say that the ovaries they produce hormones like estrogen and progesterone that regulate the menstrual cycle secondary sexual characteristics maintain pregnancy not only that they produce other hormones like relaxin which relaxes the fibrous tissue of the symphysis pubis uh, makes the pelvis the bony pelvis more capacious and another hormone which is called inhibin which inhib inhibits the secretion of the follicular stimulating hormone relaxin not only affects the connective tissue of the symphysis pubis but also it um, affects the connective tissue of the cervix of the uterus makes the cervix more dilatable so the consistency of the cervix like when you examine a pregnant woman by it's the the, the cervix will have a soft con consistency it is like the consistency of the lip like for example if a non-pregnant in a non-pregnant woman it is more firm it has a consistency of the tip of the nose so you can compare between the consistency of the tip of the nose and the consistency of the limb it is more relaxed and because of the relaxing that is produced by the uh, ovaries the testes they produce the male sex hormone the testosterone which is responsible for the secondary sexual characteristics and also it induces the production of uh, sperm it is produced by cells which are called lydic cells the other gland here we have the pineal gland as as its name indicates it looks like it has a pine cone shape it's a very small gland you can see it here it's located in the brain uh, it is part of the diencephalon and it's connected to the back or posterior aspect of the third ventricle between the two thalami these are this is the posterior view showing you the two thalami and this is the uh, pineal gland it looks like uh, the pine cone the pineal gland it's not the pituitary it is the pineal gland another gland that belongs to the brain but this gland secretes a hormone that is called melatonin and this hormone is responsible for setting the biological clock so the hormone increases at night usually and will uh, let us feel that uh, we are sleepy and reduce uh, the there is a reduction in the amount of uh, hormone uh, in the in the morning um, so uh, that's why now nowadays small oral doses they can induce sleep and are used to reset circadian rhythms especially people who travel over multiple time zones so they will have the jet lag so that's why nowadays you can find it in in airports they sell it like an over the counter medication the um, melatonin which is is not the melanocyte stimulating hormone it is not melanin it is melatonin another substance melatonin don't confuse it with with these other terms it has no uh, it has nothing to do with melanocytes melatonin secretion is therefore affected by light dark cycles so that's why the circuit for its production is so complicated it starts in the retina so if there is light then the retina will send impulses to the hypothalamus and the hypothalamus is the control of the autonomic nervous system so it sends impulses to one of the ganglia sympathetic ganglia which are located in the neck and then from the neck the, the, the these ganglia the sympathetic ganglia are connected to the pineal gland so if there is light then the pineal will will not be stimulated if there is darkness the pineal is stimulated the exact role of the pineal gland in human is not that much understood but in animals especially in animals that hibernate it is well understood because when whenever winter comes with longer times of um, darkness 
then there will be excessive secretion of melatonin in those animals. So in, in those animals, the hormone has also anti-gonadotrophic effects so that the, the animals are not going to mate. And when, it, when, when spring comes with longer light hours, then uh, it's at this time that melatonin production will be reduced and the um, animals uh, will start to mate waiting for the for the summertime but in in humans the anti-gonadotrophic effect of the melatonin is not well understood but what is understood is that it it affects the circadian uh, rhythm and also it is related to what we call seasonal affective disorders like the depression that um, some of us is going to suffer from now on because of the uh, um, upcoming winter months where there is increased uh, darkness so um, this will result in more melatonin and um, resulting in, in in this depression overproduction of melatonin resulting in this depression and uh, the therapy is to expose exposure to several hours per day of artificial light will um, as bright as sunlight the last hormone is that secreted by the thymus gland. And this gland, the thymus, don't confuse it with the thyroid, it's the thymus, and it is uh, located in the, in the thorax, in the upper part of the thorax, in the region we call the superior mediastinum, in between the apices of lungs, it is here, okay? The thyroid is located in lower part of the neck, while the thymus is located in the upper part of the, th it cannot be felt, if it is enlarged, it is it cannot be felt but the thyroid gland can be felt can be accessed through uh, an incision in the neck but not the uh, thymus gland and this gland is uh, large in uh, in infants and and in, in newborns and then be, starts to involute gradually we're going to mention this gland as we deal with the lymphatic system with the immune system but for the time being this gland is uh, responsible for um, the maturation of certain types of lymphocytes. Lymphocytes are white, a type of white blood cells. We're going to study um, the, the blood in the last lecture of this week on Friday, and you will find that the lymphocytes are kind of white blood cells. We have two types of, of lymphocytes, functionally speaking, but they cannot be differentiated structurally. Uh, under the microscope, but functionally speaking, we have B and T lymphocytes. The B lymphocytes produce antibodies. The T lymphocytes, uh, both of them, they uh, are produced by the bone marrow, but the B lymphocytes ma become mature in the bone marrow, functional, but the T lymphocytes need to be sent to the thymus gland in order to become mature by the effect of certain hormones that are secreted by the uh, thymus and they affect the T lymphocytes locally. So obviously um, these hormones, uh, these are thymopoietin, thymosin, thymic humoral factor, thy thymic factor. So multiple of these hormones, they cause the um, maturation of T lymphocytes, which are important for the immunity. And recently it is thought that Thymic hormones are, can also retard the aging process, hopefully.